Hi everyone, in this short video or in this PowerPoint, we're going to have a look at the purpose of researching information to identify the needs and wants of customers. So ideally by the end of this lesson or PowerPoint, you should be able to explain the rationale or the reasoning behind carrying out market research and why it is so important to identify the needs and wants of customers. This content will be great for those carrying out your unit to developing a marketing exam in May. You've got two parts to that, part A and part B in your May exam. So we'll have a look at identifying target markets, size, structure and trends in the market, as well as identifying competition. So what is market research? Is it important you're able to demonstrate your understanding of market research, which is the collection and analysis of data and information to inform a business about its market? There's two types of market research you can do, such as primary and secondary. Your primary market research involves the collection of first-hand data that has not ever existed before, and therefore it is original and unique data that you will carry out first-hand. An example of this may be questionnaires and surveys, or focus groups. On the other hand, you've got secondary market research, which is research that's already been undertaken by another organisation, therefore already exists. So this can be online, it can be library books, it can be newspaper articles um, and research papers. So businesses will invest heavily in market research and this will enable them to inform their marketing decisions. So you really need to highlight in your marketing exam, the importance of carrying out market research. So perhaps in the case study you're given, they may give you the budget or they might even give you the figure that they've actually invested into their market research. And this may be thousands and thousands of pounds. Now, the purpose of it is, number one, to identify their target market. If you're not carrying out market research, you will not be able to know who you're targeting as a business. Now, what are target markets? These are groups of consumers who a product is aimed at. Now, say, for example, Coca-Cola, they are aimed at 16 to 24 year olds. Um, you've got the chocolate bar Freddo, who was aimed at small children due to their packaging, due to their marketing activities carried out. Now, identifying target markets will enable you to identify their characteristics. So you'll be able to know specifically what segmentation they're carrying out. So is it demographic, is it geographical dem um, demographics, or are we looking at income segmentation? This will help you inform the marketing activities. So if you know, if you're carrying out market research to find out your target market, you will then be able to know what marketing activities to carry out for your specific or chosen business. You'll be able to know where to advertise and specifically what price to charge. You'll be able to know whether you're going to be doing above the line promotion or below the line promotion. What we mean by that is the types of money, amount of money you'll be spending on two types of markets. So therefore, understanding the target market is crucial to the effectiveness of a marketing campaign. For example, if a range of clothes is targeted at female professionals and advertised in a TV guide, this is unlikely to be effective. So targeting your advertising to your market is really, really crucial. Now, your next purpose is to identify size, structure and trends in the market. Again, all of these points they are going to be crucial to be including in your marketing exam. Now, what is market size? This is the total value of volume of sales in the market, and it can be measured in, in terms of money. So for example, 20 million, or it can be in the amount of money, in the amount of sold. So for example, 1 million cars. The market size will help you to identify the feasibility of a product, as well as the necessary reach of the marketing activities. For example, are you targeting the mass or niche market? Remember the mass market, is where the product is produced in on a larger scale, whereas a niche market is very specialised and a small market, so for example, vegan products. Now, the market size will influence the methods of marketing used as well as the budget. So in the exam, you'll be given a budget, um, which will be in your part B of the exam, and you will then need to be thinking about how you will be allocating this budget. Now, the market structure is the characteristics of the market. So, for example, local, national on a global scale. Is it business to business or business to consumer? Is it a luxury or necessity? And also the nature of the demographics. 
The structure will de then determine the appropriateness of different activities. So, for example, is it more feasible um, or appropriate to use a local ma magazine to advertise a local cafe or a national paper? In this case, of course, it would be the local magazine. Trends will then identify changes in size and structure over time, as well as trends in the market. When we say trends in the market, we're looking at consumer behaviour. So we're looking at the pestle factors um, incorporated within that, for example, social factors such as tastes and preferences, buying habits and the use of technology and how the market dynamics are increasingly changing. Um, finally, we've got the purpose of market research, which includes identifying competition. It is really important you're carrying out market research to know who your competition is. If you don't know your risks of your business, if you don't know who you are up against, you're in a bit of trouble there. Now, your competition is your rival, so it's other businesses that operate in the same or a similar market. In here, you can incorporate Porter's Five Forces. You can look at the barriers to entry of your business, barriers to entry and exit, and the threat of new entrants and how your business might be impacted or how easily it is, how easy it is for other businesses to come into the market. Understanding the actions of competitors will help you to obtain a competitive advantage and a USP, a unique selling point or unique selling proposition. An example of this might be innovation, so bringing out new products to stay ahead of the competition or using price matching. All of these will be able to enable you to have a competitive edge against your rivals. Therefore, businesses will want to be proactive in their marketing rather than reactive. So it's really important they're investing heavily on their marketing, but this is done appropriately. So a task you can think about is what the benefits to supermarkets of research and researching their competition is. So why would Aldi want to do market research? Who are they up against? Um, and what are they doing after that market research? So here's the theory into practice task. If you want to have a go at this, create a questionnaire or find and fill out an existing survey and answer the following. Think about the aims of the survey, the benefits and limitations of the research method type. Evaluate how well the data gathered will be analysed. Think about the validity and reliability of the data you've gathered and write down ways the method or content for gathering primary research might be improved and why. Would you recommend using a different method? So just to round up in this topic, you've learned about identifying target markets, size structure and trends in the market and competition. And all of this is based on market research to identify the needs and wants of customers. So if you like this video and would like any other specific videos to be um, coming out, please comment below and also subscribe to my channel. Thank you.